ES Audio. Hi guys, John Weeks here. This is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, fancy a call with your friend on the moon? It's all happening. But first, esports giant G2 has just announced its first ever all-female League of Legends team. It's essentially the best female League of Legends team in the world. So we take pride in uh, putting teams together that not only succeed competitively, but also very marketable and funny and very G2, you know? CEO of G2, Carlos Rodriguez, told us this team called G2 Health are one of the top female teams in the world. The name comes from Norse mythology, where Hell is a powerful goddess and the daughter of Loki. Harloff said the decision to bring them on board was nothing to do with getting brownie points, though. It's a very marketable, likable, funny group of people. In this case, they happen to be women, but we're not doing this just to right the wrongs of the world, you know? We're doing this because it's fun. We're doing this because we want to win. We're doing this because they are an extremely high-performing, sought-after team that everybody wanted to have. And Carlos told us the key aims of G2 are to entertain and ultimately win games but said it's the people within the company that really make it successful. G2 is not just a company, it's people doing things. That's what a company ultimately is, right? So when you see G2 entering different games, when you see G2 doing different things, it's the people of G2 doing those things. Now, it's finally coming. After years of us all requesting it, an edit button is being trialed on Twitter. The bad news, not everyone will get to test it just yet. The social media giants giving it a go with premium Twitter Blue users. They'll get a chance to edit their tweets a few times in a half an hour window immediately after their tweets are published. And edited tweets will appear with an icon, timestamp and label to make it clear the original post has been modified. Twitter has called it the most requested feature to date. The tool isn't yet available in the UK though. Hello? With all the excitement surrounding NASA's Artemis 1, we've been speaking to the company responsible for some of the video connectivity for the spacecraft. That is one of the goals, is that we should be able to provide this interactive experience for humans that are on the moon, just like on a spacecraft. That's John O'Luck, who's heavily involved with the tech called WebEx by Cisco, designed to provide high quality video connectivity between NASA spacecraft and Earth. He said they want to solve problems like the classic square peg in a round hole dilemma. That actually came from an Apollo mission where there was a square peg, but the hole was round. And there was a lot of verbal communication, but if we had video, people on Earth, engineers, scientists, and experts could much more effectively figure out what they could do to help solve this problem instead of trying to describe with words. And Jono said the technology they have now can scan an object, create a 3D holographic image of it, and send it, which he told us could be a game changer when we get humans back on the moon. Imagine if the payload specialist or astronaut is doing a, you know, a moonwalk and is able to look at a particular rock that looks just a little bit different, scan that three-dimensional image and and send it back home so engineers and geologists here could do that research. Next, it's the closest you're going to come to actually seeing dinosaurs. I'm talking about the Jurassic World exhibition, which is currently set up at London's Excel Centre, offering the chance to see some of the key dinos from the films. We truly transport you to the island uh, to see the dinosaurs. We want to take you on a journey and really pull you into that world so you feel like you've truly been transported. Michael Orsino is the Senior Vice President for Production at City Neon, the company behind the exhibit. He told us they use everything from puppets to animatronics to bring the dinos to life. You know, all the technology that goes into it is custom made. It's not like going to the store and buying a car. So, you know, everything is custom made and all the support parts and all the control systems are custom made for these particular type of creatures. And Michael told us the pandemic hampered their plans to add extra things like smells for extra atmosphere, but they are working on bringing those things back in future. We were conscious of putting anything into the atmosphere that would require, say, somebody to take a mask off. Right. (laughs) So now that we've kind of come out of COVID from a company standpoint, we're looking to add more of those elements that people will call like 4D elements back into the exhibition. A study by the University of Exeter looking into the impacts of the huge bushfires Australia suffered back in 2019 and 2020 claims it likely made the Antarctic hole in the ozone layer bigger. 
more than 5.8 million hectares were burnt, and the fires generated plumes of smoke that rose into the atmosphere and bumped up temperatures in the lower stratosphere over Australia by 3 degrees Celsius. Researchers say it caused the largest stratospheric warming since the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines back in 1991, which sent a plume of ash into the atmosphere. Coming up, photos taken of the first planet outside our solar system and the glasses that give you your own private screen. Why not hit follow and give us a rating in the meantime? The James Webb Telescope, which gave us some incredible pictures of solar systems and space nebulas, has just shared its latest image, a planet outside the Milky Way. It took snaps from four different views of the planet HIP 65426b, catchy name, right? A gas giant about 6 to 12 times the mass of Jupiter. To do that, the telescope had to use special filters to block out the light of the planet's host star because the planet is 10,000 times fainter in near infrared. It looks like more of us are opting for heat pumps instead of boilers. Panasonic has just announced it's going to invest around 145 million euros in its Czech plant by 2026 to boost the production of air to water heat pumps. It follows growing demand for the devices across Europe. The company hopes to produce around 50,000 units a year by 2026. And finally, tech firm Lenovo has just released a pair of glasses designed to plug into a phone or laptop and give you your own personal screen in front of your eyes. The Lenovo Glasses T1 use a 1080p micro OLED screen in each lens and also has speakers in its arms. The glasses are designed for when you're stationary and watching a film, playing a game, or even doing confidential paperwork. You are up to date. Please come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast. We will be back on Monday at 1pm. See you then.